The Yankees lineup, they are raking no matter who's in the lineup. We know they're hitting, but could you say with all the injuries that they've had that Tanaka, uh, Frank, might be the most important guy on the team? He's been missing consistency for years now for these guys. Yeah. He's a big game pitcher, especially when he gets to playoff. So I'm not worried about him showing up in October. This right. guy has, is battle tested. He's fine in October. Yes, consistent wise, he will give you five to six quality innings, and that's all they need with this bullpen. Yeah, well, the health is key too, obviously. And as you're noticing all these strikeouts right there, he, when he's on and he's healthy, he's down in the zone. He gets in trouble when he kind of raises that split, kind of hangs that slider right there in the middle part of the plate mm -hmm. and gives up the big time homers. But when he's healthy, playoff atmosphere, this guy's been absolutely tremendous. 1.5 ERA in the playoffs in his career, that's not too shabby. He's a professional pitcher who knows how to pitch. You always say he gives you a quality start, though. Um, but when you're facing the, the Twins lineup or you're, you're having a deal against Verlander, is a quality start from your number one guy enough? Yeah, well, I think so, because if you look at how the New York Yankees are built, the strength of their squad lies in the back end of their bullpen. Right? True. So in the playoffs, you only need four or five innings. You don't need someone to go six, seven, eight innings unless they're really, really dominating or right. unless you have a big lead so you don't have to waste any arms. But there's a reason why you went out and got Adam Ottavino, right? Mm -hmm. You got Chapman at the back end of the bullpen. And, and think about it, Dylan Batanzas is still hurt. He's not even in he that. Comes He's back not even in there right now. Exactly. And don't forget, they got a great offense. And well, that's key. that sure does help. Yes. And uh, Tanaka, <laughs> by the way, 1.5 ERA in the playoffs in his career. So he's going to be all right. Yes. Pretty impressive. He's going to be all right for he's more cool. on the Yankees. Let's bring in Fox MLB insider John Palmarosi. JP, every day it seems we hear about another round of injuries for the pinstripes. Yesterday, CeCe Sabathia and Giancarlo Stanton both received bad news. What do these latest injury setbacks mean for the Yankees right now? Well, good evening, Amber, and we should certainly start with CC first, and that's obviously the biggest concern for the Yankees considering the way their team is built and really relying on what remains of their healthy rotation. They expect CeCe's probably going to miss the next couple weeks. He has to get that knee drained, probably some uh, injections there to help lubricate that joint and allow him to get back on the mound. But in general, they expect CeCe to come back pretty soon. They also think James Paxton could be back as early as next week. So as Chad Green basically has the opener type start for them tomorrow, a key development for them is going to be James Paxton having a simulated game down in Tampa to see how quickly he can maybe get back to the help out the Yankee rotation as well. But it sounds like for now, Amber, they'll stay with their existing cast there and just use some openers and, as the guys talked about, rely on that deep bullpen to help them through. Now, with Stanton, it's been one setback after another after another. It was originally the biceps issue. Issue, then the shoulder and now the calf he'll probably be shut down for the next week to 10 days or so they do hope he'll still be able to get back potentially sometime in the month of June he actually was already back on a minor league rehab assignment this week he homered in fact on Monday uh, but then the calf became an issue so it's wait and see for the Yankees but Amber it's amazing to see them still thriving and in first place despite all of those injuries Exactly. And moving over to the Blue Jays now, they caught up Vladimir Guerrero Jr. earlier this season, and now it looks like another son of a major leaguer is on his way to the big leagues. What can you tell us about Kevin Biggio? Yes, Amber. Reports say Biggio should join the Blue Jays as early as tomorrow and make his MLB debut, uh, continuing, as you mentioned, the, the second-generation Major League stars, second-generation potentially Hall of Famers for the Toronto Blue Jays as Vlad Jr. made his debut last month. Kevin Biggio this week. Uh, Bo Bichette, of course, a son of the star. Dante Bichette, he could be oh, back Bichette. in the big leagues, we think, maybe by the end of this year or early next year. So it's part of this youth movement there in Toronto. Wow. Uh, as actually a couple other prospects, we believe, could be making their debuts tomorrow as well. Josh Naylor with San Diego and then Kevin Crone with the Arizona Diamondbacks as well. All right, so Biggio's dad, a member of the uh, 3000 Hits Club, the long road to that elusive milestone will begin tomorrow for his son. Nothing like getting your first hit in the big leagues. Woo! All right, so we know, he still remembers it, Nick does. All right, we know Mike Trout and uh, Mookie Betts, they will be in the AL MVP mix again this season, but give us some under-the-radar names working their way into the conversation in the American League right now. Well, Amber, I've got two names for you here, and we just saw actually the highlight earlier in this segment of the Minnesota Twins and Jorge Polanco, their standout, I oh, believe, no doubt, all-star at shortstop. A switch hitter, Amber, he is right now on pace to hit 30 home runs with an OPS above 1,000 while playing at least 150 games at shortstop. That has happened by only one other player in the history of baseball, Alex, Alex Rodriguez. Rodriguez. That's it. You could have A-Rod and Jorge Polanco having that stat line as shortstops ever in the history of the game. 
by the end of this season. A remarkable story for Polanco there with the Twins. One more name to watch here, Joey Gallo with the Texas <laughs> Rangers. Of course, we had seen him in the past. A lot of strikeouts are part of his game. He has cut down on that this year, and there's been a lot of reporting done on this. The, the Athletic with a nice piece about Joey Gallo's development. Ironically, Amber, we're not you're not seeing in this in this segment here and the, the, the video of, of Gallo a whole bunch of balls to the opposite field. This is not someone who has all of a sudden discovered left field. He is simply hitting over the shift. Uh, a lot of damage over the wall. Uh, one among the leaders right now in home runs in the major leagues, uh, actually leading the American League in OPS. So Joey Gallo probably not going to get that bump by playing for a contending club there with Texas like Polanco might, but certainly uh, they could figure somewhere in that top 10 AL MVP ballot before the season is over. JP, for a guy who always hit for power and not for average to see Gallo hitting 293 and also playing center field, certainly a, a new Joey right. Gallo that we are seeing a little bit. All right, JP, before we move on, I just want you and Frank over here to take a look at this conversation about okay. the American League East from just about a month ago. <laughs> so we're not even at the 30 game mark yet. Uh, do they make the playoffs, Boston? No. 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 You're, you? Uh, oh, come on, don't waffle here. Uh, at this point, no. The, the, okay, the, at this me, point, to me, no. The, the, no. the Rays and Yankees are the two best teams in that division. And, mm -hmm. and honestly, I, I like what the Jays have done recently. It's not close. <laughs> Any change well, in heart? Uh, Either Frank, of you? my friend. <laughs> JP, you got him hot. I, I, th I think Frank, Amber, night. throughout the course of that show, he has been on point. Frank, obviously <laughs> a considerably better baseball player than me. He also knows more about baseball <laughs> than me. And so Frank was right. He was sitting beside me that whole show, Amber, saying, JP, settle down. Don't get so excited here. <laughs> uh, don't count the Red Sox yet. They're the defending World Series champions. So Frank, as always, my friend, you were right. And eventually, I'm sure, Frank, I'll see Alex Cora and the Red Sox during the course of the year. And they're loyal Watch viewers of the Alex. program. They may remember that particular episode. Watch out for Alex. He's got, a, he's got the magic wand. So that's why I'm like not giving up on Alex. He's something special. All right, we'll see what happens. Right, as always, we'll Frank. see what happens with the Red Sox as they have a series against the Yankees and the Astros coming up. So don't put them in the World Series just yet, JP.